Hey everyone, it's Nada aka Sarge and welcome back to another video on the channel. In today's video, I will be showing you guys how to play chess, specifically how to move the pieces and some beginner strategy of what to do. Now, while most of you guys do know how to play chess already, this is for the community that just wants to learn how to play chess and how to get better at chess. So if that's you, definitely stay tuned till the end of the video because i got a lot of nice tricks for you to learn. So definitely one of the most important things to know when you're a beginner at chess is to um, remember that there are four squares that are really important. Now these four squares are specifically these four. Now these four are known as e4, d4, d5, and e5. Now why are these important? Well, let's take a look at a square like h6 for example. So if you're on h6, if you have a piece on h6, for example, so I'll just do this. Let's say you have a piece on h6. Now, how many places can this go? Well, this knight can go into two places here, as you can see, or he can come back as well. Um, but mainly, he can go into two new places that he's never been before, right? Uh, whereas, um, if we take a look at if we had a knight on one of the important squares like so um this would actually be much uh better for white as the knight can go to one two three four sorry not there one two three four five six seven eight squares if these pawns weren't there obviously but as you can see this knight has much more potential um to go to different places, whereas this knight would just be, you know, lousing around, only being able to go to two new places. So this is why having a piece or controlling the center is very, very important if you want to be able to win the game. So what exactly is a great first move to control the center and to develop a piece? Well, I'm not sure if you can develop pawns, but e4 is definitely my recommended beginner move if you're just learning to play chess. Now e4, what this does is it controls these two squares in the center, uh, sorry this square in the center specifically, um, it opens out the queen's diagonal and it opens out the bishop's diagonal uh, and black can do a million different things here and then you can just bring out your knight either to defend the pawn or you can um, as well you can kind of bring out your other knight to attack the pawn. So you can bring out your other knight to attack the pawn. Oh my god, my arrows are so bad. But you can bring out your other knight to attack, like if they play e5, you can bring out your other knight here, which attacks this pawn. Um, and this leads to many different variations. Uh, there's also, you can play what's known as the Vienna, which is where you bring this knight up, and now you actually just over defend this pawn. But yeah, there's several different openings that you can learn, you can study them. I will have I have a lot of videos on different openings, so if you do want to um, learn different openings, I definitely recommend that you go check that out. Um, but yeah, so e4, great move, controls the center. Black replies with e5, control the equal amount of center control. You see, now black um, wants to control the center as well, so now you guys have blocked off these squares, so you guys are kind of like getting in the center, you see? Whereas if um, black played something like, uh, let's say he played a6, for example. Now, we take a look at this and say, well, what's the mo next move that I can do to get maximum value and um, put my pieces in the center? Well, the correct answer is d4. Now, what this does here is we're literally controlling this full area um, with our two pawns. And both of these is the center, and we can bring out our knights again to back that up. And now, all of a sudden, we are very much controlling the center very well. If black continues to just be dumb, then um, we can just continue to play... Um, bring out our knights and stuff and now as you can see here this is a very much winning position for white as a white has an amazing strong center whereas black just has not done anything with his pawns and they're just sitting there now um one piece of advice that i would definitely give you is to bring out your pawns first rather than a knight if you're a beginner so definitely bring out both your pawns to the center if possible for example if you are faced with 
e5 after you play e4 you can play d4 offering a trade in the center but the problem is um, the next principle which i'm about to talk about is to never bring your queen out until you've developed all your pieces and you can see my thing just went all the way down here and black's just starting to win because he has this move and what this does is attacks the queen and it wastes a turn so now you'd either have to go back or do something like this and it's not the best for um for white here no but um there are um definitely openings this is called the triple gambit um where uh you just sacrifice three pawns and then all of a sudden your bishops are just you know oh, when <laughs> your bishops are just you know very strong on this diagonal but that is the danish gambit um and yeah so um now i'll just move on to what um the next principle which is to never bring your queen out before you develop so in this position if black decides to take here and we have to take with our queen black has this move and attacks the queen so this is why we don't want to bring our queen out because we our queen is the best but it's uh, it's strongest but also the weakest because since it's the strongest we always want to hang on to our queen which means that we have to waste turns uh specifically um, getting our queen to safety which we shouldn't have to do which is why um, the first priority should always be to develop your pieces your two central pawns first if you can if you can't then don't uh, so for example what I mean by that is if uh, your opponent plays this don't uh, you can play d4 uh, not d3 don't play d3 you can but just don't play it uh, d you can play d4 um, but like I said it's it's kind of it, when black takes it's you take with the queen. It's not it's not good for you. It's it's not that good for you because once again you're bringing out your queen too early. You don't want to do that. What you do want to do, however, is you want to attack this pawn. You see, this pawn is lined up with your king, which means there ain't nothing protecting it. Unlike if you played the queen spawn opening, which is in another opening I will cover later on. But now we can attack this pawn. And now we're attacking this pawn. Um, they can defend this pawn simply by bringing out his other knight. Um, and then there's different variations. There, this is the Italian. Now, what the Italian does is it gets this bishop on this very, very strong diagonal. And um, when a bishop is on this diagonal like this, uh, when the queen comes in to join in in the fun, it can be very dangerous. Uh, even this, this is called the fried liver attack. Uh, if Black takes this, uh, then we have this and. We hit the queen and we hit the rook at the same time. So yeah, this is this is very interesting. Uh, but uh, that's for another time. Um, there is also the Spanish. Uh, it's where you go here, and you're just hitting the knight, and then you will castle after you develop all your other pieces. So next opening principle for you to follow is to castle as soon as possible, and where to castle. So I definitely recommend that you should castle when you have the opportunity to and especially castling is something you should look into when you don't have anything else to do. So if you have not castled and you're just looking around for things to do, you can just castle and um, you're fine. Now why exactly do we want to castle? Well when you castle your king is much safer. So if my king's out in the open and I just you know casually play things like nothing's happening and this knight's just going to jump around and then we we get um hit by yeah well uh please please ignore the bar just plundered the knight but uh let's just say this happens then our, our king is open to lots of different checks you can't cast on check um to block or something and uh, our king is definitely not safe here because lots of things can attack it and the king can get out in the open and expose very very quickly whereas and back to this position, if we castle, uh, let's not play that pawn there, shall we? We castle. It's not off. Yep. Anyway, we castle, then what happens is we have a good structure. Our king can't be hit by anything. You see, if the queen or whatever comes in to try and attack it, our king is like in his fortress. Like he is stopping everything. Nothing can come and invade this fortress unless you 
basically allow that fa to happen, which you will not. You will protect your king. You won't move any of these pawns unless absolutely necessary. For example, if it's mate in one. Uh, because these pawns are what protect that king. That king is full of protection. This rook just stops anything from come checking this king from down here. Uh, and the pawns just stop everything from invading these squares. So, um, it's definitely very, very strong to castle. Um, and I very much recommend castling. Well, I don't recommend it. You have to do it. It's something like just general knowledge, a no brainer. If you have nothing to do and you want to get your king to safety, castle. Even if you don't want to get your king to safety, castle. Now let's look at the value of the pawns and other pieces. So, uh, the value of the pieces, uh, these pawns, um, are very strong. Um, even though they might not look at, like it, they have, there are eight of them. So, they are kind of like, if you're gonna sacrifice, most gambits where you sacrifice pieces involve sacrificing a pawn or two so you can get a better development. So, these pawns are worth one value point. However, I like to think that these two pawns on the outside are worth literally half a point if you can capture this pawn only do it if you like don't know what to do if you have a better move just don't bother capturing these pawns because they're not going to do much these pawns are much better because they actually help contribute something in the center for example my favorite opening the english starts with not a central pawn but in in otherwise it starts with um a side pawn or, or a wing pawn saying that if black was to play d5, we take. And then the same situation earlier, black uh, disobeys the law by bringing his queen out early, and we attack it. And now it has to go to the side or wherever it needs to go. And it's not the best um, for black yet. So that is why I play the English. But um, uh, there is also um, many reasons why these pawns are better than the outer pawns, just because they don't they don't control much. Um, these pawns can suddenly become valuable, especially throughout the end games. So, think to yourself: if you're in an end game, an end game is a where you guys have just a couple of pieces left on the board. Then these pawns, every pawn just becomes valuable. Every pawn. Whereas if you're in the opening and just starting out, then these pawns aren't the best to go for. I definitely recommend trying to capture or create threats on the board rather than just trying to get these guys because they aren't going to do much for you. However, if you don't have a move, definitely capture these pawns. I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm just saying make sure that you have a reason behind it. Now, moving on to these knights. Now, knights are worth three points of value. And knights are actually really strong because not only can they jump over things, they have the ability to fork. Now, what this means is that they can, for example, make their way around the board. And um, if, if the queen moves out from here, for example, or somewhere... You can just do this, for example, hitting the king and the rook. There's several instances where you can hit the king and the queen as well. And you can pretty much hit anything other than knights themselves. So knights are really strong for and have a lot of attacking potential. Bishops are um, also worth three points. Uh, at beginner level, they're definitely worth three. At grandmaster level, people say they're worth 3.25. So just very slightly more than knights. But at beginner level, if you're watching this video and you want to know how to play chess, these guys are pretty much the same thing. Uh, bishops can control long diagonals. They can't help over things like knights can, but they have much longer ranges and they're kind of like snipers, if you if you know what I mean. Next is rooks. Now, um, rooks are kind of... They're, they're pretty strong. Uh, rooks are worth 5 points of material. And uh, rooks are worth this much because they can just control files and rows. And they can do a lot of damage. Especially when you get into the end game. How, like, majority of the time you'll end up with a rook or two on the board just somewhere. And it's gonna, it's really useful to know how to play with a rook. And what the correct moves to do with a rook are. Rather than just go around making random moves. Uh, rooks are, are also love open files, so open files are just files that have no pawn or stuff obstructing them. So for example, if this pawn was in here, if it was just here for example, and this pawn was out, and this rook was not here, 
this would be an open file. And, um, <laughs> yeah, this rook is just going to be chilling over there. Uh, no, it's something like that. Then, um, this, this would be an open file. And the open file means that this kind of acts like a laser. And anything that hap happens to just arrive on this laser is going to be obliterated. Because, um, open files, especially in the end games, nothing can come on that unless it's defended. And if anything higher material than a rook does happen to plunk itself upon it, uh, well, it's doomed. And rooks are also very useful when checkmating the king. Um, there's something called a ladder checkmate, which I will explain in another video. But, um, yeah, rooks are worth five point of material for a good cause. Next up is the queen. Now, the queen is the most powerful piece on the board. It can move like any other piece other than a knight, which is why knights are worth as much as a bishop, and it can basically act as a bishop and rook. So you have a bishop and rook mixed together, you get a queen. So this doesn't necessarily mean that you trade, you can trade a, uh, if you're trading off a bishop and a rook for a queen, um, you would actually be slightly better, even though these are basically the same thing. Uh, now the reason for this is because queens are worth 9 points and um, bishops are worth 3 and rooks are worth 5, so it's 8 to 9. Now why is this queen worth 1 more? Well, the queen is a singular piece. These guys are 2. These guys can work in different places at different times, whereas this guy is going to be running around the board, the most important piece. Um, they can, If both of these guys are gone, he can act as a substitute. You don't have to worry about getting these guys forked or whatever, you, you've you got it, basically, and that's why queens are worth just one more. If you had to trade a rook, a bishop, and two pawns, why it would actually be um, better. I mean, sorry, no. Uh, if you had to trade off um, rook, bishop, and two pawns, uh, that's worth ten, and um, that's not actually a positive trade, and you are losing, like, half the side of the board, just so you can get one piece. So it's not always the best to take the queen, but in 99% of situation, and for most of you beginners, take the queen if you have the chance. Now kings are just worth the entire game. If you can trap the king, then you have basically won the game. That's what it means by checkmate. Uh, so, uh, yeah, kings can just move one space away in any direction, so they are Pretty, they're not that hard to trap, but it's not easy, especially if you're playing someone who knows what they're doing. Uh, so there's not really a points value, you just trap the king, you win. It's pretty pretty simple. Okay, now on how the pieces move. I should have probably done this section earlier, uh, but uh, yeah, let's see how do these pieces move. Well, these are pawns, and pawns can move twice, on the, twice forward on the first move. Uh, and then thereafter, they can only move one. If they manage to get to the end of the board, they can go and transform or promote into any other piece other than a king. Can't transform into a king because that would kind of break the game. Uh, also, pawns, um, there's a really special move called en passant. For example, if my pawn was here, if the, the black decides to move two spaces in front, you notice that I can actually take on this move. Uh, this is called en passant. Uh, it is a chess rule invented in around the 14th, uh, 15th century, and it was uh, made just to say, like, hey, these guys can move two on the first move. Uh, it's just like moving them one, right? Uh, so, yeah, that's how it's, um, it happens. Uh, it's only on that move. You notice that if I do something else, that that is no longer an option for me to take the pawn. It's you can only take that pawn on that move. So um, I can only take that pawn on that move only if they move two, and only if your pawn is right next to it, you can en passant. Next up are knights. Knights move one diagonally and one straight in the same direction. So for example, they move in a kind of L shape, as you can see here. And uh, this is mainly why uh, knights are very strong. They can jump over any intersecting pieces. For example, I could do this as my first move, even though there's a pawn in the way. So basically, they jump around and they demolish. 
Uh, knights all have three points of material, and that's pretty much all a knight can do. Uh, but don't take these guys for granted, they can be very much deadly. A bishop can move diagonally on any square of its color. So, um, these guys can control a lot of squares from a distance, which means that if you have a bishop right up in close to a, uh, to a thing, um, you can also have it from far away, and not only is that safer, uh, it's actually a really good thing to have for the bishop. And uh, the bishop can control an infinite amount of squares that it can reach. It can't go over intersecting pieces, unlike the knight, that's the knight's speciality. Um, but it controls long diagonals from long distances, which is partly why it is very strong. Now, rooks here move horizontally and vertically, and these guys can absolutely destroy anything that comes in this path. So these guys are like laser beams, they just go down files and um, anything that comes in there has um, obviously what has the choice to take it if they have a rook uh, staring down that file row. Uh, so this is why rooks are worth 5 points of material. Um, rooks are also used in castling. Uh, castling is, um, uh, which I explained later, uh, which I explained before, sorry, uh, where something like this could happen and... Um, it's where the king moves not one, but two spaces towards the rook, and the rook just hops over into that next space. So, two spaces in, and the rook just comes over here. And now your king is in like a little fortress, and it's uh, king safety, and this also can help get your rooks out onto a nice open file, such as the e-file, or something along those lines. The queen is probably the most powerful piece on the board. It can jump around and do whatever it wants. Uh, it moves like a bishop and like a rook. It's about nine point of, points of material and it is very strong. Now, uh, why is a queen very strong? Well, it's pretty self-explanatory. It can literally go anywhere it wants with obvious restrictions. Um, so it can go in diagonal. It can go in diagonal. It can go horizontally like so. It can control one square around it. Everything one square around it is like, it's like a little um, place of doom here. As you can see, if I highlight every place that this queen can go right now, you can see anything on that square has the option of being taken. And uh, that's why this is just scary. Um, very, very much scary. Uh, if there's a queen on your side, for example, that queen is, can just demolish everything and tear down your structure until you have nothing left and yeah. Be careful when you move your queen around because it's very valuable. And last but not least we have the king. Now the king can move one space anywhere around him. So for example something like this. He can just move any square, square around him. So here. He can move here, 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 here. If the king is attacked, like, uh, let's say something like this, and then he goes here. So if the king is th being threatened to capture, like this, this is called a check. Um, and uh, over here, you are forced to either block the check by intercepting it. We have nothing to intercept. Uh, if we had a pawn like there, we could have blocked it. Uh, but we don't have any pawns. Uh, then we have to look, can we take the bishop? No, we can't. So that means we have to move the king away somewhere um and yeah so it's basically like another way to it's a free move for the opposite color uh as they get to move away the piece and get another turn after they either block take or intercept uh sorry not block take intercept block take or move um but yeah uh the objective of the game is to actually trap the king so the king can't go anywhere and that is known as checkmate uh, it is uh, very definitely, definitely something that is easier said than done. Um, and um, when someone manages to achieve it, it is very much satisfying because um, after all this time, you can just trap that king and I think that's very close to checkmate. Is that checkmate? No, I'm okay. I'm just trying to. Just trying to checkmate this king here. Just make him do some weird random moves. Boom. Mate in four. What's this mate in four? 
No, there you go. Um, eight and two, eight and two. Anyway, but right. Uh, that's checkmate. As you can see, the king can't go anywhere. The king is just trapped and confined in his little space. He's self isolating. That that didn't work. Please ignore what I just said. But um, yeah, he can't go anywhere. He's trapped. Um, and that is what you call a checkmate, and that is how you win the game. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. That's going to be all from me today. I hope you do enjoy the video. If you did, please leave a like and comment and subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. And once again, thank you for 69 subscribers. I couldn't have asked for better. Uh, thank you for all the support you've been giving me, and it's been epic uploading videos for you. Uh, if you want to see more videos, please let me know in the comments what you want to see next time. Uh, I have a Discord server. I will leave a link in the description for that. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.